Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the Jesse James Facebook Live. I hope you've had a beautiful day so far and it continues to be wonderful for you. This is Jesse James here on Facebook and I am Gem Hawks. I'm coming to you all the way from the United Kingdom where today it's feeling very, very autumnal. Tell me where you're coming in from, what the weather's like, what you've been up to today what your pets have been doing. My little dog Mojo, who's a Jack Russell Terrier, is sat at my feet staring at me, wondering why I'm not picking him up and giving him the scritches. What have you been up to today? I hope you have had a wonderful day, no matter what it is you've been doing. Today we are going to be using one of those beautiful Colour Trends bead mixes. This is in Peacock, which is one of my favourites. It's absolutely glorious collection of colours. Uh, I particularly love Labradorite as a gemstone, and that tends to display a lot of the peacock tones. So this is a gorgeous mix to be working with. Alongside, we're going to be using one of these Druzy Focal Pendants. Now, I've worked up a sample for you to look at in a couple of minutes in the purple. And I've got a little blue one to work with as well to share with you a technique today which I hope you will find useful. It's not as daunting to create as it is to look at so hopefully you'll enjoy it and you'll find it transferable across so many different jewellery making projects. So Roberta is in. Hello Gem and friends. Hi Roberta I hope you're doing very very well today and Sharon is in. Hello hello. Hello hello operator. Wasn't she in Hong Kong Fui? Did I remember that correctly? That was a great cartoon series. If you're a janitor and a dog who likes to dress in pyjamas, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> I hope you've had an amazing day, no matter what it is you've been up to. Would you like to take a quick sneaky peek at the project we're going to look at today, just while we're waiting for everybody to arrive on in? Trudy is in. Hi, Trudy. I want to say... Kanitha, if I've in pronounced that incorrectly, I'm terribly sorry, it's a new name to me, but hi and hello to you, Marcia's in, hello everyone. Kanitha says, I love that show, I absolutely adored it too. Gia, hi bead friends, hi Gia, how are you? Shall we take a quick sneaky peek? Sharon also remembers the cartoon, and Sherby's in from Pennsylvania. Perfect, wonderful. Let's have a quick gander down on the overhead camera. This is what we're going to look at creating today. Now, all of these beads come from this bead mix, which is the Peacock in the Colour Trends. It's a glorious collection of beads and all hugely complementary colours. So I could have chosen either of these pieces to work with. They're both glorious. I have a particular fondness for a Druzy, which is uh, a collection of crystals on top of another crystal. If you need the technical description, you may need to seek somebody who's a little bit more technically minded than I am. This technique here is what we're going to look at in a little while. And it looks a little bit more complicated than it actually has to be. I've simplified it over the last seven years since I started making wire work. I looked at people's amazing projects and I thought I'd like to do that, but it looks really hard. So I found a slightly easier way to do it. So I'm going to share that with you today and I hope that you enjoy it and find it as useful as I do. Sarah is in. Hello, my darling. How are you today? So exciting. Absolutely. Robin, hello kiddies, it's only 88 degrees in Tempe finally. Well, that sounds positively balmy from where I'm sat right now. I don't know what it is in those kind of degrees. It's about 13 degrees in English money, as we say here. It's not money, obviously, it's a temperature gauge. It's pretty chilly and kind of damp. They are gorgeous pendants to go with the beads and it's really any of them that you could have used. I'm going to tell you what little I know about Druzy. When it occurs in a gemstone such as amethyst, it usually occurs on the inside of a geode. Now, a geode is a massive hot rock, um, often formed with volcanic activity. You get a great big glob of molten material that then sits and cools. And what happens is water comes through that as it cools, little cracks and fissures form in it. And that, that water can bring different elements through with it. And that is what changes what gemstone and what coloration you get. A uh, geode could have calcite in it, it could have onyx, it could have agate, it could have amethyst. Lots and lots of different gemstones form in a very similar way. I'm not a trained 
geologist, unfortunately, so I can't give you the full science on it. But I will tell you that it is one of the most spectacular formations in the gemstone world when you've got all these little teeny crystals forming on a much larger, much smoother crystal. So these two pendants, I'm going to show you those again. Gabriella says hello. Sandra is in. Tisha is in. Sarah says that's interesting. I'm just remembering a few little bits from here and there. As I say, I'm not a trained geologist, so... Um, there's a world of internet out there for you to do your research. Let's have another quick look at the piece that we're going to make today. This is the technique that we'll be learning, which is a form of back-to-back -back prong setting. Now, this technique can be used almost anywhere in the world of jewellery. I'll give you a quick sneaky peek on the side. What it does is allows you to see every aspect of this gorgeous pendant. Now, I think they're electroformed. It could be tape. I could be wrong. Not 100% sure. It's electroformed, perhaps, around the edges. Uh, but it is really, really beautiful. And now, this one is what we call a window because you've got a hole all the way through, which is absolutely fabulous. I love these so much. And both of these stones work incredibly well with the Colour Trends bead mix in Peacock give you another quick flash of I'll open that up in a minute so you can have a look at all the glorious beads within I'd love to be an amateur geologist so interesting earthly magic you are not kidding it is it's fascinating hi from California I've been wanting to learn how to wire up a stone with prongs this is your day this is the day for you hi from Virginia Beach Gabriella sending a big heart Maria is saying hi all Cheryl's in from Massachusetts and they're electroformed I thought they might be they look it now sometimes you will find uh, an alternative to electroforming is tape which is a very 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 thin metal not quite as thin as gold leaf but that can be literally pressure formed it can be uh, wet put, just put on with water and then pressed in it can be heat applied a bit like a shrink wrap but electroforming is a really really cool technique keeps your gemstone nice and safe hi from california says ebony prongs yay so excited to learn this skill super useful can be used in so many different places around the world of jewelry what we're going to learn today is a back to back prong setting so this really can be formed around any shape i've used this technique over the past couple of years in dozens and dozens of different projects so hopefully you'll find a way that you can use it in your projects too and it, you just need to change the shape of the prongs so we're going to learn quite angular prongs today so they're almost l shaped i want to say but if you curve them instead then you can also encapsulate tumble stones you you know the big crystal pendants that we have at jesse james are amazing you can even prong set those with this very same technique just by changing from that quite a sharp like 90 degree prong setting to a more curvy bend in the wire you can absolutely prong set virtually anything i've even prong set some very very large gemstones in the past hit me up after tonight's live if you have any questions about alternative prong setting i've got a bunch of tutorials about the different ways it can be used but let's get down to the board again we're going to have another look at those beads before we kick off today's tutorial so I'm just going to scooch these over to the side for a second. Now, the board is new. We're testing out the colours. If the colours are too much, I can move this and we'll go back to the normal wood that we have underneath. I just want to show you, excuse the rustling, I just want to show you the beads that come in this bead mix because they are luscious and divine. So let's put all of those down in there. You've got bead caps, you've got crystals, You've got crackles, you've got opaque, you've got glorious, beautiful, faceted black. You've got these incredible pieces, which I will show you how to add those on to our design a little bit later on. So there's those as well. I'm just going to pop those out of the way. But I've used absolutely everything that you see there in the necklace part of this pendant and necklace design today. So the first part is set on a bar of wire which I can show you a little bit later on towards the end of the day, towards the end of the tutorial. And I've also used these beautiful fan-shaped connectors. They are gorgeous. This is what we're going to work with today at the beginning of the tutorial. I think I've probably waffled quite enough for now, so let's get cracking. Ooh, gorgeous, says Marcy. Hi, Gem. Hello, Marcy. 
Uh, love the necklace you're wearing. Is there a tutorial for it? There will be on Sunday, my lovely. It's coming up very, very soon. Danielle says, hi, hello, my lovely. Let's have a gander. Melody, I completely, completely agree. All of the colours are so complimentary. You could put any of those beads next to any of the other beads and they would 100% work. So let's just pop that out to the side for the moment and let's get cracking. So I'm going to be working with two wire, uh, wire gauges today, rather. Two wire gauges today. Pop that little pendant up at the top for a second. My first gauge is 18 gauge. Now this can be done in artistic or German style wire. I'm working with some wire I have in stock which is a silver plated copper. It's a mid temper so it's a really kind of middle of the road uh, in terms of its strength and in terms of its solidity. Can you see that okay on the board or do you want me to put a white board in or bring in the wood that's underneath? My standard desk colour is also available if this is not showing up. Just while you're having a think about the colour combo, I'm going to show you the tools that I'm going to be using. I've got my flush cutters, which I always have. I have got my bent chain nose, which I always have. I've got my round nose. Pretty much most jewellery makers have round nose pliers. Looks good, says Sandra. Fantastic. It's okay from here, says Melody. That's brilliant. We will run with it. If it gets tricky to see, just shout at me and I will change it for a slightly darker wood. Sweet, says Sherby. Fantastic. So I'm looking here at around about 18 inches of that 18 gauge or one millimetre gauge wire. And says the wood would be better to see what you are doing so we've we've had a few more votes for the paper at the moment let's see how we get on my other alternative let me just bring it in is the plain white which i'm not convinced is actually going to be better sarah do you want to weigh in on the color of the board you want me to use for today wood would be better i think the white is probably too bright we're going to lose the silver on the white so what I will do is I will pull the board out of the way that I'm working on and we can have a look at the difference. So half a shake of Rooney. Whoosh! And it was gone. So I think being in terms of we're using a silver wire, that's probably not a bad idea to work with today. So that's what we'll go for. If there's too much light on it, let me know and we can have a gander. Now, the flat... These are chain nose pliers. They are they have two flat surfaces and they're box joint pliers. So what I'm going to do is use the very, very bottom of these pliers to create the shapes in uh, in the wire which we're going to use. We're happier with the wood. Brilliant. OK, just scooch that up and out of the way. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can achieve this. If you have a large set of pliers like my bale making pliers the distance at the box joint here is very very large I've just got a scrap piece of wire here and I'm going to show you what I mean by the distance if I just pop that in and create a shape what that will do is put a very large gap between your prongs that's going to be too large so you don't have to have specialist pliers I'm just going to use the box at the bottom of my pliers to create this form. So if I just trim this away, this is just a bit of a taster of which pliers you can use that you probably already have. So again, this is a little bit of scrap wire. If I take the wire that I'm going to form prongs with, right down to the base of my pliers, you can see I've got one pen mark here from another project. If I put another pen mark down at the base here, I'll be able to ensure that I get the same gap and distance all the time. So at the moment, I just want you to see the difference at the base of the pliers. Let me grab that other one back. This is not using the pliers as they are meant to be used. This is using the base of the pliers. So we're going to want a prong that's this big. If you make it overly large, too much tip of the prong comes over the surface of the piece. So I'm going to put my scrap back out of the way and what we're going to do is get cracking. What I'd like to do is show you what we're aiming to make. That, in my mind, has always helped 
when I, I mean, I, I don't tend to follow tutorials. I tend to look at something and think, how can I make that easily? So this is where my projects come from. <laughs> this is what we're looking to make, which is a series of prongs connected by a series of what should be essentially reasonably straight lines. Now to create this, if you have flat pliers that are the same distance all the way along, that's fantastic. But if you don't have access to that, what we're going to do is use our pliers to create those prongs. So I'm going to start a good couple of inches in from one end, and this was 18 gauge, approximately 18 inches. So I'm going to put a right angle in to begin with, and if it helps, you can put a little pen mark right down at the base where you're going to be working. I know that the distance across my pliers is the same from here to here, so I'm going to make sure that I use that space to make sure I get the same length prong. Now it sounds scary, prong setting sounds scary, I promise you it is not. So all we're going to do to begin with is create this funky U-pin shape. Once you've got your first U-pin shape, and this is about two and a half to three inches in from one end, we're going to start by creating our first prong. So if I pop my pliers on the long section of wire and turn that up at 90 degrees, every time I do something, I'm going to bring this back down to the board because it, with the camera being so close to the desk, it can be tricky to show you the exact manoeuvre. So you can see I'm just using the same distance which is this distance across the pliers to create the distance here between the prongs and the length of the prong itself. Once I've got this U-pin shape with a right angle coming away, I now want to bring this elongated section back down. So if I grab hold of the shape we've just made and start bringing that down, that's about 45 degrees so far, by hand, I'm going to pinch that closed, and that's only so that you can see it slightly easier than me doing that with the pliers. Once I've got my shape moving, what I want to do is get that really tight. We're not going to be wiring inside our hairpin racetrack today. We want that to close up. So I'm going to very, very gently, in small movements, close the end of that prong tightly away and you can see even with just very small movements you can get that tidied up now i do want to have clean 90 degree angles so i'm just going to close that up if you've only just joined this is what we're looking to make we're looking to make i'm going to go for nine prongs so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine and that is enough to come around the base of these large druzy pendants and to cover this enough of that surface safely. So if I pop that back out of the way and come back in with my pliers, I'm just going to flip this around to the other hand. I'm right dominant, so it's easier for me. Now, like I, I, I want to repeat this, and I'm sorry if it's boring, but prong setting sounds daunting. It really isn't. Once you get into the rhythm and you've made yourself a strip of prongs, it is super easy to continue. So I'm going to take that long tail of wire that's coming away. I'm going to grip that just below the line that we created that's the base. Oops, I've hit the microphone and turn that through 90 degrees. And if I put this back up into the correct orientation, you can see what we're looking to make is starting to occur already. I'm going to do this a couple of times. I'm going to go three, four times maybe just to repeat that technique because it's key. If you have a couple of inches of spare 18 gauge wire, have a practice, have a practice. Danielle says this is an amazing idea. You could even combine two so it can hold a cabochon prongs front and back. I have many tutorials on my YouTube channel teaching different ways of prong setting and that is indeed one of them. You can even go for prongs on the front and a corseted lace up back. Lots of different ways that you can do that. Um, I will pop a link in a bit later on for all the different prong setting tutorials, but this one is especially for Jesse James beads to house these incredible druzy pendant pieces. So I'm going to pop my rack of prongs back out of the way, and I'm going to go through this process a couple more times slowly, and then I'm going to speed it up a little bit. And you can, once you get the hang of it, once you get that technique, you can make this up quite quickly. Now, the key element is to keep everything 
flat we're working in two dimensions so you, you want your prong setting strip it's like a gallery strip at this stage you want that to be in two dimensions so it's front and back as if it's between two panes of glass now I'm using the base of my flat pliers my chain nose pliers to set the distance which means that I can achieve quite a regular distance which is the same as the prongs themselves so what we're going to do is continue along on our way I'm going to pop those pliers in again you could put a pen mark if you needed to I'm just going to ensure that it's in the correct zone put a right angle bend see that's slightly out of true but the dimension is good so I'm just going to pinch that very firmly and draw that up so it sits at 90 degrees now if I pop those pliers in close to the tip of that half a prong to begin with I'm going to bring that down just to about halfway about 45 degrees I'm going to spin that around and then close that prong up by hand now the reason I close the prong up by hand is that it can slightly come out of whack if you press too hard with the pliers so I'm going to squeeze very very gently to close that up and just ensure that I'm happy with that shape now the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that my first prong is slightly higher slightly taller than my second prong this is something that happens if you don't put a pen mark on your pliers and you end up using a slightly different position on those pliers so do indeed grab yourself a little mark and it will ensure that you have a regular distance between one prong and also the length of the prong now if I flip this over in the other direction I'm going to pinch the prong that we've just created I'm going to pop those flat pliers what I might do is switch to my bent chain nose pliers for this section I'm going to show you where I'm gripping that wire so it's a very very small distance just below the straight line that is forming the straight line of our essentially prong gallery wire and I'm just going to push that prong like so and you can see in that way we've created our next prong now if you wanted to correct the distance the length that we've got there you can very very carefully just draw those together slightly and mess so that you can elongate that by changing where the angles occur what you will do is weaken the wire which is why practice with this design is handy so if I move back to my first uh, set of pliers which is the flat Sharon says no need to purchase gallery wire I can now make my own absolutely and with that in mind when you're making gallery wire for slim cabochons or small faceted gemstones you will need to reduce the size of the prong so you could use uh, for instance your flat pliers to create the distance between and then you could use a mark further down the tapered tip on your pliers to create the prong size so you can completely adapt this to whatever project you want to work it up to so we're going to pop those pliers in again right down near the base flip that over I'm going to push the wire up at 90 degrees so you can see how we're starting to get towards our uh, pronged section or our gallery of prongs Roberta says I didn't know you could buy pronged wire I really had no idea how you could get it this is fantastic thank you German JJB you don't need to buy your gallery wire for certain projects you can make it yourself <laughs> so I'm going to pop those pliers in again just to get the distance of my prong the height of my prong or the length if you prefer so I'm only ever going at 90 degrees I'm making sure that the angles are correct I'm looking to see really square regular spaces I need to flip the design over because I'm right dominant and that's how my brain and my hands work I'm going to grip the first half of that prong draw that down to 90 degrees and release and then I'm going to close that up by hand I do close it up by hand where possible because it means I can see if that's going to look about right and that's a much better match that prong there so I'm going to again close that up Janelle says this is so cool thank you so much very very gently now it's better to do seven tiny movements than one and twist the wire over what I'm going to do now is show you one of the pitfalls 
Uh, this is heartbreaking when it happens, but if you go in and you squash that really hard, your wire will turn over. Now, to rescue that, if that happens, if you've gone a bit rough-handed, you can twist that back round and close it back up much more carefully. The issue if you go too heavy handed with this is I've weakened the tip of the wire here. I want to show you what will happen. So please, 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 seven small movements rather than one large one. If you continue along in the same way, coolly, calmly and collectedly, what you will end up with is the right number of prongs. Now, for me, when I'm working with pendants, whether I'm designing with beads or with metal work, I like to have a central bottom section here. So this is what I refer to as my six o'clock. So to achieve a six o'clock on what is essentially a slightly off pear shaped or a slightly off oval, you'll need an odd number of prongs. Now you don't have to match the prongs upon the back. You can have fewer, you can have a different number. You just need to ensure that that is safely enclosed. If you're going for an aspect of dual facedness, which these are perfectly set up for, you can have a day when you're feeling more blue, or you can have a day when you're feeling a little bit more glittery and you want to show off your druzy. So take the time, make the effort, and go for an odd number of prongs on both sides. Sharon says, thank you for showing us the mistakes also. Absolutely, every time. A lot of my videos on YouTube are quite long because I do show the mistakes that get made in the video because it's useful to know that and then you don't have to make those mistakes. <laughs> So I've got a strip here of nine prongs and this was made from an 18 inch length of 18 gauge wire. What we want to do with this next is turn the prongs over. Now if I show you the side of the project, what you will note, these are deep pendants that we're working with. They're deep, beautiful slabs of gemstone, which if we've ever chatted, ever, 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 you can understand how much I love gemstones. I am a gemstone fanatic. So having a really deep chunk of gem is, is super cool to work with. What this means is that we need a reasonably sized prong. I don't know if you can see from where you are, but my prongs are bent in half, basically. That's the size that these have worked out to. So if I show you the one set of prongs against the side of the pendant we're going to work with together, you can see that because I'm doing back to back prong setting, you would need to bend these prongs in half and a second set of prongs will also need to be bent in half. So I'm going to show you now how to get those bent over in halves so that they will fit around a thick design like this. How do you measure to make the correct number or needed amount of prongs? Okay, so what you can do, make sure you've got more wire than you think you'll need. So 18 inches is a good amount and you can kind of run that around. I don't want to bend this wire yet, but you can estimate whether that nine, those nine prongs rather, will be plentiful. So for me, I'm guessing that my central, my odd number leads me with a central prong in the bottom. <laughs> there will be enough prongs coming up the side to ensure that that's nice and safe hello from tokyo japan konnichiwa rose i hope you're having a beautiful day no idea what time it is in tokyo i've just about worked out it's like half past four on the east coast of the states so i'm afraid i don't know what time it is in tokyo but hello anyway <laughs> so you can guesstimate I'm sure that nine prongs will be enough to fit the pendant that we're working with. And that is with a good distance, a good plier base distance between each of those prongs going on. Now, to put the bend in the prongs is a two plier technique. If any of you make chain mail, you will know that two pairs of pliers are good. A wide set of pliers is better than a tapered set of pliers for this, but I'm going to risk it. What you need to do is to support just under half the length of the prong from the side with the straight line of wire. And then I'm going to use my bent chain nose 
pliers on the far side. I'm going to grip very, very firmly with my non-dominant hand and use my dominant hand to turn that up. It's around about halfway along the prong. Now, if I show you that sideways, you can see I've brought that round to approximately 90 degrees. If you're working with a slab like so, and you look at the angle here, you will be looking to recreate that 90 degree coverage. Whoops, that's got away from me, I'm very sorry. So you can see that as that sits around the edge of the pendant, that's going to house it really nicely. If you're looking to translate this to a smooth domed cabochon, you will need to create a much curvier prong bend. But I'm going to run along here and bend these nine prongs at 90 degrees. So again, I'm supporting very, very firmly and I'm squishing down on the straight line of wire and the bottom half of my prong. So there we go. That's two. We're going to do all of these because I need to show you how to put these two pieces together next. So supporting the bottom half of the prong. Hello from Arizona. Hi to you. I can't see your name. It says speed off the top of my screen. Sorry. Da -ba -da -ba. It's Linda. Hello, Linda. I hope you've had a beautiful day. Thank you very, very much. There we go. So I'm going to support the base of that prong like so, just under halfway. And the reason it's just under halfway rather than exactly halfway is when you take the tip of the prong and you bend that back at 90 degrees. Now that's opened slightly. You can see curvature has occurred just here. And that's because I wasn't holding strongly enough at the base. It's better if you've got broad set of pliers to do that, or you can go sideways. The risk with going sideways with your pliers here is that you don't get a perfect bend. So if I show you the pitfall again, the wire that sits around the base of those prongs is starting to get a little out of shape. If that's an issue for you, you can always swap pliers. Make it as convenient as possible for yourself. Once you've made that gallery of prongs, you don't really want to lose them. So I'm going to support with my bent chain nose pliers. I'm going to grip with the straight or tapered chain nose pliers. You can have the same effect. We're just working with two pairs of pliers to bend all of those prongs halfway along to a 90 degree bend. Now you can see that that base wire is twisting slightly and this is actually really cool because that's the direction that we want those um, wires to bend in. We lost the ability to speak for a moment there so I'm just going to take that last bend up. You kind of have to concentrate on this bit. Uh, Melody has to run, catch us up on a replay a little bit later. Take care and have a good day. So you can see that we've now got 90 degree bends in all of those prongs all the way along. What I'm going to do is just re-straighten that out in case it hasn't given you an automatic bend. I want to show you how to achieve a really nice bend in the wire. The next step that we're looking to achieve, if I show you that gallery strip of prongs from a couple of different angles, the nut all perfectly even, I'm not going to worry about that. You can take a little bit more time to make sure that they're all exactly 90 degree bends. You can take a bit more time to do that yourself. And as I say, practice with off cuts of wire to get those prongs nice and even. The next stage that we're looking to achieve is a form fitted prong setting. So if I just hover this section that I've already created over one surface of our beautiful druzy pendant, you can see that that is going to form fit quite nicely. So to achieve that curvature, let me just pop that one back out of the way. It's a slow and gentle technique again. So work out in your head which way you need to bend your gallery wire. And what I'm going to do is lay my bent chain nose pliers a third of the way along and then a half the way and then two thirds of the way along and make very, very small movements in that base of the wire. If this opens up slightly at the base of your prongs, you can close that back up. And we're just looking to begin with, we're not measuring overly, we're just starting to give the wire an idea that we'd quite like it to be curvy. Now if I bring this back down and put my pliers underneath, hopefully that will be in slightly better focus. So very, very small and delicate movements 
and you can see how easy this is to work up on a round cabochon piece as well if you heard that that was one of my dogs sneezing for which i apologize hello shelly shelly lovely to have your company so once i've put a general curvature in the let's call it a, a, a prong gallery <laughs> we're just going to size that up and see what that looks like now at this point you will see if there are any bulges in that base wire it's actually looking reasonably tidy considering I slightly mashed it and didn't take as much care as I could have when bending those prongs over so I'm just going to tighten up the curvature down at the bottom with that central prong in mind if I flip this over and pop that side up you can see that that's starting to fit now if I press this down into the table what you'll notice is that some of the prongs aren't perfectly to true this is a good solid gemstone that I'm working with I'm going to use the curved side of my bent chain nose pliers just to straighten up those prongs so that I'm happy with how they're sitting if you've ever set gemstones in a, a more silversmith or goldsmith fashion what you use is a curved agate burnisher and it acts as a rocker so with a nice firm gemstone like this you can rock these prongs very very gently down with the curved side and you can create a much more form-fitting prong gallery for them so if I flip this piece over and I bring in the other section that's already been curved and bent into position what I'm going to do with these top wires is just gently warm them because if you warm the wire it lasts longer and it will behave better and it's less likely to shatter what I'm doing here is just opening them out very very cautiously to give myself a little bit of thinking space I want to open them out sideways like so pop that pendant into position and just line these two pieces up I want to make sure that it's going to look good and that I'm happy with how everything's coming together now as much as I can tell down on the desk that's going to look pretty neat so if I take the druzy pendant out of the way for a second the next thing that we're going to need to do is to tie these two halves together so you may need to just uh, just massage the wire slightly to get the prongs to sit equal and opposite if you've used the same pair of pliers they should be sitting pretty much opposite one another and it's only from the side that you'll see if they're lined up you won't see from the front if it's that there are any slight imperfections i wouldn't begin to worry about it but this is what we're looking to create next which is the prong set the back to back prong setting now as i say this can be used for almost anything and this is really quite a large section that we've worked up because we're working with a deep slab of gemstone what i one of the reasons i've used silver colored silver plated wire today is i like the juxtaposition between the two you've got this beautiful gold electro forming and then you've got the silver color of the wire over the top i think it looks magnificent so to draw everything together i'm going to use artistic wire in a 26 gauge that is equivalent to 0.4 millimeters these two wires 18 and 26 are my two favorite wires you can make almost anything out of these two have i missed uh sarah and jen you're always giving us inside track to beautiful pieces that's really kind of you thank you very very much so what i tend to do when i'm tying my two segments together now whether that be prong setting and something else on the back prong setting and something artistic you can even use such things as your uh, connectors i lost the word then sorry you can even use such things as your connectors to sit on the face of gemstones so you could wire this on you would probably want to go to a 28 gauge but you could wire those on on one side instead of using a second layer of prong setting it's an endless world of possibilities with wire work and this is why i love it so very much so what we're going to do is hover those two segments of back to back bent prongs like so we're going to just try and get them to sit as neatly as possible you may find that you've set the wire now so you've got a really good bend in them and you're happy with how that fits the pendant so what i'm going to do is line up the first two prongs on one side i'm just going to again open those two wires up at the top i loved hong kong food yeah me too it's a flavor of my childhood hello hello operator 
So we have those two back-to-back -back prongs lined up neatly. What I'm going to do is to control my spool of wire by putting it under my forearm and I'm going to free off about nine inches or so of that wire to work with. It's easier to wrap around a section between two prongs than it is to try wrapping up at the top when you're working from the end. So there's around about five or six inches of that finer gauge wire just hanging off the end of the spool here. So what I'm going to do is grip very firmly with my non-dominant hand, allow that finer gauge wire to pass over the top diagonally. And I'm going to pinch really firmly whilst I now wind around and draw those two sections of wire together. Now, for the sake of expediency, I'm not going to do the whole thing because otherwise we would be here all night. Now, the aim with this is to encircle those two sections of wire super neatly. This is what we're looking to achieve. So I've absolutely filled all the gaps between those two sets of pronged galleries or gallery wire pronging, however you want to think of it. I've absolutely filled each section with wire. So it takes a while and every time you do a couple of circles around those two base wires, so I've done another three, I'm going to push that up tightly. I'm going to go for one and two and another three, draw that down and then I'm going to push them over. Let's see how many we can fit in. Now if you want to have the ultimate in professionalism, what you can do is ensure that you have the same number of wraps of your finer gauge wire between each prong. Me, I have already forgotten how many I've done. Tina wants to know, am I sitting in a gaming chair? I'm looking for a comfortable chair. It's driving me nuts. Need to be comfortable while doing projects. 100% I am sitting in a gaming chair. Bought my son one for his birthday last year. Sat in it to do some work and was amazed by how comfortable it was. So much better than any office chair I've ever had. So I've completely filled as much as I can between those two prongs. I'm now going to very, very gently, just very gently, I'm barely closing those pliers. It's just a very soft manoeuvre just to flatten those down gently. Now one of the areas that wire can wear is when it is stretched out by itself. If for instance this section of wire was on the outside of the design where it's lying now it would be at risk. So what I'm going to do is close that up and I will later tuck that diagonally up the inside. I'll show you that in a moment. So my, let me just undo one half of a turn. My finer gauge wire is coming off the top like so and I'm going to draw that diagonally so from the top left corner of this junction to the bottom right corner of this junction. If I put my finger underneath hopefully you'll see and then I'm going to continue wrapping. And what I would like to do is have a good number of wraps. I'll probably go for three on both of those wires. Scooch that down so it's nice and firm. And then I'm going to just separate that out slightly. When you cut a finer gauge wire like this after you have done some wrapping, if you cut that when it's going around the back of two wires, it's at huge risk of coming away. If you open these two side wires up and then continue to wrap three times around just one of those wires, and it doesn't matter if there's a bit of a gap, let's go for three because I can always remember three wraps. Push that up nice and neatly. I'm going to trim away that excess and pop it in my scrap pot for later use. And I'm just going to squish very, very gently to tidy those last few wires up, like so. Now, if I take my hand off the spool, it's going to whiz across the table, so apologies in advance. I'm going to show you the underside of the project, or the inside of the project. So you can see that my passes of wire that are diagonal, going from one corner to the opposite corner, go on the inside of the project. In this way, they're going to be butted up against the electroforming. They're not going to see anywhere near as much action and wear as if they were on the outside. So you would take that wire diagonally across like so. I just pull that out of the way you should be able to see. So here it's traveling from bottom left to top right. I'm going to pull that around. And if I flip the design over, you'll see that we just continue with the wrapping. Now, at this stage, it's fiddly to show you 
because I need to take the wire all the way around all of these prongs and they act a little bit like teeth and they catch on the wire. It isn't difficult, it is fiddly. So you would just take the tail of the wire up inside the design, wrap that around, make sure your tension is good, flip it over, look on the outside and you continue all the way along. So you're going to fill in between each prong, diagonally on the inside, fill in all the way until... Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba! But are they comfortable? Oh my gosh, yes. I love my gaming chair. It is the best. It is absolutely wonderful. <laughs> I, I can't, honestly, I looked for a very long time. I even tried yoga balls, uh, an elevated yoga ball, all sorts of things, and nothing comes close to the gaming chair. It's brilliant. So this is what you will end up with. And you can see three small wraps and around both wires and then three wraps around just one. And for attention to detail's sake, it's on the same side. So if you designate this the back, then your three individual wraps go on the back, the three individual wraps go on the back. All of those diagonal passes are on the inside of the design and you've got a nice sense of strength around this now. So what we're going to do is remove the pinch bail. Now these are good quality pinch bales. They are soldered. What I'm going to do is be disgustingly brutal and take that away. Now, I'm sorry about the destruction of your bail, Sarah, but I want to take that one off. Sorry, 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 sorry. Because what we're going to do is pop the pendant piece into position and what I'd like to do is just make sure that I'm happy that my six o'clock prong is centralised opposite the twelve o'clock of the loop up at the top. So I'm going to now pinch this into position. Now again many of my projects are not tricky, they can be a little bit fiddly. So what I want to do is bring one set of the wires, we're going to take these forwards wires out of the way for just a hot second and we're going to have a quick look on the back. So you've got these two wires coming up to meet. Now, if I pull one of those out of the way, so we've just got a single wire on the back now, what I want to do is to bring that single wire on the back behind the loop at the top of the pendant piece. And I'm going to do the exact same on the other side. So those two are now crossing over. Once they've crossed over, I'm going to terminate them very, very short and pass a section of wire through the loop. To make this easy to see, I'm just going to be a little bit brutal and pull these front wires out of the way. So if I trim away an excess of around an inch or so, then we're going to hold on to these sections that we're cutting, apart from that one which went on the floor. I will find that later with my feet. So let's start with one of these sections of wire and I'm just going to do this one time. I'm going to put some extra heat in. Pam says I'm going to watch the replay to catch up what I missed. You have my attention. I hope it's useful for you, sweethearts. Um, cannot wait to try this. That's very kind of you. Thank you very, very much. I hope that you all enjoy it. Like I said before, if you have scraps, get to grips with setting your prongs evenly first and then by the time you get to this stage it'll all be super neat and beautiful. So I'm just going to show you heating this wire is super important because I want it to do something quite clever now. So I'm heating that, heating, heating, heating the wire. I'm going to push it backwards so it's going away at the back like so. Bend that around and push it up through the loop. So that's just come up through the loop. You can see, hopefully the um, camera hasn't wobbled too much as I've walked it with the wire. That's come up through the loop and I need to draw that back around and on itself now. So it is a little bit springy at this stage. Hopefully, if I just bring this out of the way, you'll be able to see. Hopefully that's in the right place. I'm just going to draw that around, draw that around. You will mark the wire slightly, it so doesn't matter. Take that across the back in whatever way is easiest for you. You'll notice again I am using tiny, small movements. Little by little, you can't rush it. If you rush it, it'll go wrong. And then I'm going to trim away right down to the last couple of millimetres there, fractions of inch. I'm just going to close that loop up. And this is locking the prong setting to the pendant design. So I'm going to repeat on the second side at the back and just make sure that I'm happy with the security. 
So this is locking onto the pendant design itself. So again, I'm going to heat super warm this wire at the back. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Give that some extra warmth and love. It would be also very, very cool to do in a raw copper. I wouldn't attempt it using brass. Brass is a little bit hard for this project. Once that's nice and warm, I'm going to put a bend in that section of wire and draw it forwards and through the loop, like so. So you can see that that's starting to line up and it will lock onto that pendant design in a second. So you do kind of need to be slightly octopus person and just draw that around. You can do it by hand. So you can see that I'm going to try and match that up close enough to the other one. Bear with me while I catch that section of wire. I could even take a tiny bit more of the wire off there just to make that more symmetrical. But if I push this down to the table now, what we've done is we've created a back-to-back -back prong setting together. We've woven that together neatly. We've got prongs on the back to keep the pendant piece secure. And now we've got these two wires up at the top to play with. There's a number of different things that you can do with these. So you could very, very simply draw them up to the top and then create a bale. And uh, I think there's a tutorial from last week on my YouTube channel which shows you basic bale making. What I'm going to do is pass them through the same loop that we've just used, but instead of cutting them quite so short, I'm going to allow them to turn into these tiny little loops at the top here to which you can attach almost anything. But I'll show you the bead order in just a second on the remainder of this necklace section. So one at a time, again, these are now the front wires. I'm just going to warm that one out of the way. I'm going to give this one a hearty warm and pull it forwards. Now, if you warm the wire, it becomes... It doesn't turn into liquid, obviously, because I'm not a magician. But if you get that nice and fluid, it becomes warm enough for you to pull that all the way through without losing its beauty. So I'm just linking that through that loop at the top of the pendant. We're locking this all into position and then you can create a quick wrapped loop. Now we are getting short on time this evening. So I'm going to do a wrapped loop on one side. If you've not seen wrapped loops before, what you would need to do if you're going to recreate the project that I shared with you earlier is you're going to need to make sure that your loop comes forwards and away or at 90 degrees to the pendant, the loop needs to come forwards so that these connectors will sit flat to the body. If your loop goes sideways, um, then your pendants will sit like this, which could be desperately uncomfortable. Uh, not pendants, connectors, sorry. So I'm going to show you one quick wrapped loop, which because you've locked this in position through the loop at the top of the pendant, you don't need to worry about tying great big knots in it. So I'm just going to put a forwards 90 degrees on there. So that's coming from the front of the pendant. Lost my round nose pliers for a minute there. I'm going to turn those pliers around halfway to create the first half of that loop. Pop the pliers back in. We're looking at the back of the pendant now. Draw the tail of the wire all the way around. If I remove the pliers and show you overhead, you can see we've got that round form. Now, if you wanted to add in chain, you could do that now. Pops a little bit of chain in there if you desired to do that or if you wanted to add your connector in you could add that in at this stage as well and because your loop is at 90 degrees to your main focal pendant it will sit against the body so if I pop that one on real quick slide that into position what we're going to do is to support the round form we've created like so and then take the tail of wire around to fill that gap. Now, because we warmed this just a couple of minutes ago, it's still quite fluid to work with, which is wonderful. I love wire so much, <laughs> almost as much as I love gemstones. So that's all the way around to the back there. We'll just have a look and see what that looks like. You could probably get another pass of wire around that coil, but what I want to do is cut this away and show you the rest of the design. So trimming away, you've got a, a little end of wire here, so we just need to make sure that that sits flat, especially as that's going to be worn quite closely to the body. 
So give that a bit of a squish and a squeeze. Not your fingers, though, because you'll end up with a little funny bruise and that won't be fun. There we go. That's nice and smooth. So you would repeat on the other side, pass your length of wire from the right-hand side through the loop and turn it outwards. Everything is now locked into position. Your pendant piece can't go downwards because of all the prongs. It can't go sideways because of all the prongs. And at the top, you've locked it into position with these passes of wire. So there's your wrapped loop, your connector. You can add either some beads onto a section of wire, add another wrapped loop, put your beads on, or you can go straight for beading thread. If I move this out of the way, what we're going to do is have a look, sorry about the noise, at the pendant and necklace that we created earlier on. Now this is using the Peacock uh, bead mix from the Colour Trends range. And this is what the bead mix looks like. So many things in there. It's just amazing. So what I've done is I've created a small section, which is wire. And that was just because I had, because rather I had some offcuts from my project and I'm quite thrifty like that. So I created these small, it's just a wrapped loop at either end, exactly the same as we created at the top of the pendant. And then I added in some beading thread and a homemade clasp with all of these beautiful beads from the project. Let me get that out of the way and show you the finished piece. I'm sorry it's so noisy. I hope it's not quite as noisy as I'm anticipating. So that's the bead order. There's a photograph of the piece already if you wish to recreate the exact design, but I know you wonderful Jesse James Beads people are incredible with your eye for colour and design. So I'm sure you can create something different but equally as uh, amazing with this beautiful bead mix. So I'll pop another photograph of that up later if anybody needs one. Let me just put my funny face back on. Oh, my mouse has gone to sleep. Hello, I'm back with you, back in the room, back in the room. So, Janelle says, thank you, I'll have to have a go, but we'll be watching replay to see you how you finish this off. Not a problem at all. First class tutorial, thank you very much. It's great and so pretty. What's your YouTube channel? I'll pop you a link in just a second. I am going to be with you during the first week of December. Is it the first week of December? I can't even remember. It's in my diary. I'm going to be there. I've got two projects for you for the winter workshop, and I'm so excited. I saw there was a bit of a sneaky peek going on earlier in the week and I was so overcome with how beautiful it was that I messaged Instagram to say, is that mine? It looks so pretty. So I can't wait to teach with you then. Really, really looking forward to hanging out with you guys and the other amazing instructors that will be joining us for the winter. I want to call it winter wonderland, but it's a winter workshop, isn't it? That's the correct phrase. <laughs> thank you so much for hanging out with me today it's been an absolute delight to work with you i will pop in in just a couple of moments when i've pressed night on the um the youtube broadcast thingy that i can't remember the name of i will add in some links to different channel uh information over on on youtube there's lots of different projects with prong setting it looks tricky but it really isn't i've made it as simple as possible because i want everybody to be able to enjoy it there's this huge mystique that people want to add to their jewelry making but i want to share with you everything that i've learned I'm just going to give you. So I hope that it's of some use. I hope you've enjoyed today's class as much as I have. And I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. If Sarah lets me come back, I will be here again Thursday of next week. Uh, and I will be, as I say, on the uh, winter workshop. I've got two classes to share with you. So I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Take care. Mwah. Bye.